Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. These are my 2023 reflections as a result of working with this book since it showed up within awareness three years ago. This simple yet powerful book reconciled so much for me, especially the feeling aspect, which facilitated so much more ease on the journey to revealing my ideal life. And I trust that this conversation and findings will contribute to your life as well. And I say reveal because we acknowledge that creation is complete and all of it exists inside of you. The kingdom of heaven is within. And all you do is accept what you desire inside by imagining what implies, feeling the wish fulfilled and allowing your subconscious mind to bring it into existence. We simply select what we desire to experience in our imagination from the infinite possibilities that already exist within and allow it to happen. The subconscious plays out a bridge of incidents that seem to lead up to the externalization or realization of what we imagine. Neville states, The world and all within is our conditioned consciousness objectified. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. Knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all you desire. Armed with a working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. So let's go deeper into this part here. Condition consciousness objectified. He says, This reality may for the sake of clarity be likened unto a stream which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, It is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious is selective and the subconscious is non-selective. So what we experience and accept as true in our imagination by feeling, or as he says, conditioned consciousness is what reveals itself in our world. So again, it's already inside. We fulfill what we desire by imagining what implies and feeling the fulfillment inside and going about our life. You leave the rest to the power of your subconscious mind. For example, I was traveling since spring of 2020 and in February of 2021, I had a desire to stay in one place for one year. However, I was very selective about what I wanted for the place. I had a list of criteria and I wasn't going to settle. And I saw it clearly in my imagination and I knew I would find that place. I felt the feeling of the wish fulfilled. A week later, I ended up meeting an agent that showed me a number of places and they seemed to have similar criteria, but not all. And so I knew that they weren't the ones because they didn't feel like the one I imagined. There was one close to the end that was pretty close to what I imagined, but it didn't feel the same, so I didn't go for it. A few days later, he sent me a property to look at, an email with a few pictures, and I knew it was the one. So I said, I'll take it without even seeing it, because it felt like the one. I knew it. So he said, we'd like you to go see it and ensure that it is in good order. And I was going to sign for it without even seeing it. However, to meet the criteria, I went in and it felt ideal. So prior, I wouldn't agree to committing to a place without seeing it. But by working with this book, I know when things feel like what I imagine. And so this is the place that I'm still staying in now. The subconscious makes it all happen. And we don't need to settle for less. And when it shows up, we know it's the one. So as we have a desire, 
we can see it in our imagination. We know it clearly and it feels ideal. We accept it from the infinite possibilities that exist within. So I accepted what I desire by seeing it in my imagination and feeling it was done and the subconscious mind some way somehow brought it to pass. And so what about unnecessary force and control on the bridge of incidents, if any? We release it. Everything gets taken care of by the subconscious mind. And if there is something for you to do, you'll do it naturally, like in my example. So if one experiences unnecessary overthinking in relation to what they desire to experience, I recommend the seven-day mental diet video I did recently to help. I'll put a link in the description to it, and I trust you'll find it to be very helpful. I also found it to be very helpful to apply this book throughout the day whenever I have a desire by imagining what implies the desire is fulfilled and going about my day. Because if you're like me, then you may have many desires all day long. The results of doing this were quite interesting. What I would imagine would show up exactly or in some shape or form closely related. People, experiences I wanted to have, etc. What I also found very interesting was how my life experiences as a whole visibly changed. I seem to no longer doubt and hesitate as I went about my day-to-day -day initiatives. This removed so much suffering. It seems that the seeming difficulties and opportunities which brought forth unnecessary emotional suffering were no longer there. I also found I was actually a lot more pleasant when I was with myself and also with others as I went about everything in my day. It led me to the conclusion that so much suffering is caused by not allowing oneself to fulfill what they desire in imagination. For example, neediness in regards to whatever I wanted also went away, and if I felt like doing something, I did it, and if I didn't, I wouldn't. No doubt, no hesitation, no argument. By fulfilling everything inside with imagination, it seems to cease unnecessary force and control. So working with this information has a powerful ability to remove unnecessary suffering by simply imagining what we desire, accepting it, and going about our lives. This is experienced then as more bliss and ease overall. So the idea again is to lovingly allow yourself to have what you desire by fulfilling it in your imagination. And you can do this real time. And if one has a hard time accepting what they desire in the moment, that's fine. They can apply the following before going to sleep. He says, sleep is the door into heaven. What you take in as a feeling, you bring out as a condition, action, or object in space. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Prayer like sleep, is also an entrance into the subconscious. The only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already answered. Every night as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied and spotless, for your subjective lover always forms the objective world in the image and likeness of your conception of it, the conception defined by your feeling. So prior to going to sleep, we experience what he refers to as state akin to sleep. This is theta brainwave, or what is known as hypnagogic state in psychology. There's many that actually enter this state for creative application. For example, Edgar Allan Poe and Salvador Dali used to nap with a steel ball in their hands. So they would wake up when the ball hit the floor and this is how they would know they were in this state for their creative initiatives. So in a state akin to sleep, the conscious mind is alert enough to imagine something or to apply auto-suggestion. What I like to do in this state is loop 
recorded auto suggestions, which seem to automatically fill up my imagination with what my auto suggestions imply, which is quite an interesting experience. In state akin to sleep, there's no overthinking, and the subconscious mind is also very receptive to suggestion. Since you experience theta brainwave right before sleep, you can imagine what implies during this time, and you'll find it's easier to accept it. He says, Your prayer must be answered if you assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds means for its realization. To pray successfully then, you must yield to the wish, that is, feel the wish fulfilled. So the feeling of the wish fulfilled for me is just as it implies. A feeling of fulfillment knowing that it is done. And some way, somehow, the subconscious mind will make it happen. Also, as mentioned, what has been very helpful for me is to not wait, but rather if I have a desire to feel it right away as fulfilled inside and go about my day. And you can, if you'd like, keep a log, logging your results where you can reflect upon your personal experiences. This will help release any doubt-based beliefs. So to emphasize, he says, all you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. That's because creation is complete. Everything exists inside of you. You select it with your imagination and you accept it by the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So he says, when you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how that end was achieved. However, having witnessed the end, regardless of any anticlimactic sequence, you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly defined. So you'll find as you apply what is being discussed in this book regularly, you'll maintain that calm and secure as he describes it because you realize that everything exists within you. You have everything inside. All you do is accept what you have already by imagining what implies your desire is fulfilled. Feel it so and allow the subconscious mind to externalize it for you. No force or control is needed. Everything happens naturally, and if we experience any doubts, we can imagine our ideal again as we feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled and go about our day. So it's interesting how, as we continue to apply this information, it seems to work easier and easier. I like to use auto suggestions since I've been working with it since I read Think and Grow Rich in 2004. However, the emphasis on the feeling aspect in this book helped make it more powerful for me. Eventually, I got to a point where I just feel like it's going to work out, even if I experience any seeming challenges and obstacles, and it always works out. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, Loving acceptance of the end reveals the means based on what I am conscious of being now. I think feelingly into my ideal state in which everything I love happens naturally, externalizing what I desire from within as everything exists within me now. I am complete within now and I accept what I desire now to allow the subconscious mind to reveal what I desire in its infinite effortless ways. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.